hi everyone welcome back to the channel uh, let's see our agenda for today so today we are going to discuss on a very important topic about logs and why they are important next we are going to see what are custom logs and why do we need custom logs next I'll demonstrate a video which is showing that how a custom logs looks like you can see a sample in the right right side of the slide as well next I'll show that how do we create custom logs our own custom logs okay and then at the last that what are the scenarios that we should consider when creating our own custom logs okay so beginning the uh, beginning the video so what are logs and why they are important so log record events taking place in the execution of the system so basically what all events that are occurred in the system and if you want an audit trail of something that audit trail is known as a logs so you can think of a bot which is running in the background and at the end of the day you want to know that what all steps the bot took at that moment of time so how would you know so for that you can refer to the logs so in terms of UI path for the bots which are running in the background we do not have any UI interaction so if it is an attended bot you can see everything happening on the screen right but if it, an, it is an unattended bot then you have to rely on the logs whether it is orchestrator log studio logs or custom logs so that is where logs are important now why why logs are important the first part is monitoring definitely second part is troubleshooting so for let's say that bot is stuck somewhere right so how would you troubleshoot the problem so for that log is an important key to troubleshoot it debugging of course and the last part is application performance so we can log the performance of an application across various env environment and then we can compare the logs of various environments so environment one logs can be compared to environment two logs and then we can see that okay the application performance was good here and it is not very much good in application two so logs can be used to measure the application performance as well right so next thing is what are custom logs and why do we need them so custom logs are something which are created by the developer that are understood by the developer and agreed with the team so why I am saying agreed with the team so for example if I am a developer and I am working with 10 other developers and if tomorrow I am not available some other developer who is a replacement or who is supporting me can read the logs and tell me that okay so this is wrong with your process okay so that's why I have say custom logs are created by the developers to log the events in a way that it understood and agreed with the team okay so the next question arises we have when we have studio logs when we have orchestrator logs then why do we read our custom logs so studio and the orchestrator logs are in a very detailed format and that gives you a very much information maybe you don't require all the information which are provided by the orchestrator or studio logs okay so that's where custom logs comes in picture next what are the details which we require to be logged in the custom logs or what may be the scenario when we require the custom logs for example if you read a data table and you want to print the data table count for your reference right so that place you can use a custom log okay so you have a string which is manipulated you do some string manipulation on a string and now you want to see the before and the after so consider it is a long string right so do that you can print the before string and after string in the log and then you can compare with the help of your custom logs next let's say you have five excel sheets and all the headers are different right so at a one go you want to analyze that which x header was different on that particular run so you can quickly refer to the logs in the logs you can quickly print the excel sheet name and the header information and then you can refer the logs and compare the information paths so in many of the times we take data from different different sources right and if you want to know which source exactly the bot referred you can print the part in the paths in the custom logs remind you here the path should not be a business drive or any of the business data you don't want to print the business data in your logs that again depends on your implementation and the kind of automation you are working with so what is there in the video further in the video further I am going to quickly demonstrate a bot which is a linear Amazon bot which is scraping the data and in the right side of the video you will see the custom logs getting generated for each and every step that the bot is taking okay let's quickly jump on the video okay so this is our UiPath studio we just go to the folder folder is empty we hit on debug so uh, I have put a debugger so the process will stop once the file is created okay so I will just go to the folder okay the notepad file for the log is already created you can see the date and the timestamp just created I'll just open 
it with the notepad now the expectation is whenever whatever whenever the process is running each and every step of the process will be logged in the logs okay so i'll just keep it side by side i'll continue the process now as you can see whatever steps the bot is taking all the steps are being logged into the notepad file such as browser is open so now as you can see it has typed the laptops now it is starting the data scraping okay so the, now the data is extracted and it's saved in an excel so the bot has given me all the details so if i just open it you can see all the steps which are performed by the bot if the video you just saw seem interesting so let's see how we can create our sample custom logs so we start with a blank xaml file we take a sequence and then we call it try catch main okay so let's go first by the arguments so we have basically four input arguments and two output arguments so i'll talk about the input arguments first so basically to create the log file we would require a log folder name and a log file name so i'll leave the two for later on so as of now we just require a log folder path where the log file should be created and what would be the name of the log file and as an output argument we would require the final log path and a boolean variable and indicator is the process is successful or not so as of now two input variable log folder path log file name two output arguments if the process was successful and the final log path okay so let's see how how we can make it so we take a sequence okay so inside the sequence first we check whether the folder which was provided is valid or not so for example if you will see this is a log folder path and this is an input argument in the form of string right so first as a validation we should check whether the path is empty or null so how can we check that we'll take a sequence we'll validate if i go by the condition it says string dot is null or empty so we check if the folder path is null or if it is a white space if it is null or a white space then what we'll do we'll just throw a business exception which says okay which says that the folder argument cannot be blank null or white space and we'll stop the process right here let's see how it goes okay so i go to argument so this is now log folder path is blank okay so if i just go and run this file okay if i go back to the studio you will see it says that the log folder cannot be blank okay so this is the first validation which we should do okay so if the if now there is a valid path now it will continue with the process next we'll check the next if there is some path and now the next is we have to check whether the path provided is valid or not so for example if i go to the arguments tab and i provide a path uh, log folder path as something that is not valid so i'll just type my name here okay so now we pass this condition because it is not null but the folder does not exist right so we have to handle this scenario let's see how the bot handles this so if i just go and run this file okay you will say log folder does not exist so how did we check that if i show you the implementation we just go to the log folder just collapse this one okay we have taken a path exist activity and we have passed the folder path which is the input argument and next we have check if the if the boolean variable from this is true if folder exist is true then that is okay if that is not true we throw a business exception we log the message and we throw a business exception and we stop the process so this is how the validation we should check for a valid folder okay next once the folder is valid so what is the next thing we want to do we want to validate whether the log file is correct or not so same validation first we check whether the file name is provided or not because we cannot create a file with a blank name so this is this block right so we same thing if it is null or white space we check if it is not null we just create it if the name is provided we just create a folder we create a file notepad file with that name okay now when we are creating the file whether we want to append that name with a date and timestamp so this is an additional check which i have just added so that is this argument this one so if their default value is false that that means that when the file is created if you will specify the name as let's say i'll go here i'll just specify the folder path one of the folder so this is a valid folder path now so if i just give a valid folder path okay now i can see the path is valid but the file name is not there so i'll just put a file name as sam sample 
sorry smple sample log file demo something okay so this is let's see how it goes if i go here and if i now go and if i run the file okay if i go to the output it is executed if i go to the folder you will see the at txt file is created okay and it has not appended the date and timestamp okay so now if i go to the argument and if i just specify this boolean variable as true okay now what happens let's quickly run the file okay executed successfully now if you will see the same file is created with a date timestamp in it so how do we get to this functionality so we just have this flag we are reading this flag and then we are appending we are getting the current date time so the current date time will have a backslash and a colon with it so we just replace the if you will just go to this assign you will see what i have done is i have just replaced the uh, backslash with an underscore because we cannot have an backslash in the file name same thing we do with the uh, colon and then we just append it to the file name a simple logic okay so that is what this flag does now so we have a when we have the final uh, name whether or not appended with the file name so we just put a dot txt in front of in back of it so we can uh, put this thing in the file name also but i prefer to do it like this way okay next we have to create the file so for creating the file what we do is simple we take a create file activity we just pass the folder path and the file name so the folder part with the path which ha we have already validated and file name is the file which we have just created okay and at the last once everything is done we will just output the complete path in a string variable okay so this is the complete path now apart from this i have added one more sequence a small sequence called default text so what default text is so let's say you have created the log file and you want to have something in the default line so what do you want or not right so if i go to the arguments you will see i have created a default text as log file created success successfully and i am just appending it with a two string right now dot date time current date time so if i just open this one you will see something already printed on it so this is that functionality which i have implemented okay and if everything is successful then we just create we set the boolean variable to true meaning that the log file was created successfully what happens in case of exception in case of exception what we do is we just uh, change the boolean flag to false okay so this is how it goes so at the final if everything is okay i just mark the process as successful and i'll pass the final log path as an argument as in final output file so this is how we can create our custom logs i have shown you different scenarios so let's quickly go and check something so if i just delete the file name from here i just put a space okay i'll go and run file okay so you will see so you will see it cannot be blank null or white space so these are the some of the consideration which you can think while creating a log file okay so let's say if the file okay if i am not appending with the timestamp we have seen this okay now i just give a final name let's say i'll create a log with the final log okay i want to append with the date timestamp and I'll just keep this to the default settings and I'll just run this file. Okay, if it is ex executed successfully, you can see a final log is created with the current date timestamp. And now this a simple log file is ready. Now you can use this log file path in the uh, in your ex entire workflow and leverage. But how do I use it? so now if i collapse everything you will see there are two there are three to four input arguments so these all these arguments the path this everything in the ideal scenario in the production scenario should come from a config file so i'll just quickly show you how i have implemented in my workflow i'll open my main.xaml 
so this is the uh, linear process if you want to know how i created this linear framework of re you can just follow the video in the description and you can go back uh, to create a linear re framework okay so how do we implement that this one so in the initialization part i have just invoked that workflow create custom logs workflow okay so if i go to import arguments you will see the values these are coming from the config file the log file name and this folder path are coming from the config file and then at the end we are just using this log variable and the complete path is in a string variable str complete log folder path this one now now for each and every step what we want is we want to add the log message in the file which we have created right so how can we add it so in each of the xaml you have to just okay so for example kill all process so in each and every xaml you have to add one additional argument which is called an log text file path this will be a string variable and what would be the value so if you'll see here i have created one argument log file path and this log file path is nothing but the complete log file path which we have got from this create custom log this one so this would be an input argument for each and every xaml right and what what we have to do inside the workflow is if i go inside the workflow we have to just use an append line activity and then the path the name of the the path will be the path which is an input argument in our case in text log file path and then we type now dot to string just to add the date in a time string and then we type our own custom messages so this is how we can create a custom logs okay so what what i am doing here so at the starting i am typing starting to kill all process then i kill i then i kill excel then this is the orchestrator logs and then I, again i am typing a message which says all the relevant applications are closed if i quickly go to the logs and show it to you so this is how it looks like i'll just zoom it you can see so the log file was created then it started to kill application all the relevant application was closed then in the init section i have done the same thing i have so opening the url with the, if i quickly go to the process.xaml file okay so in the process.xaml also i have the same input argument in log text file path so what i am doing is in log text file path starting the process part then this is using an append line activity as simple as that then once the browser is open what we have writing is the browser is accessible then we are writing everything here right so how, from where we get the url so that is coming from the this config file and we can print the same in the log file path okay so this is how we can create our own custom logs okay so we have just seen how can we create our own custom logs in ui path we have just seen how we can create custom logs and how we can add data to the custom logs if you really like the video please subscribe to the channel and in case you are implementing the same and you get stuck anywhere you can just drop me your email ID in the comments and i will email you the create custom log xaml in your email id that will be helpful if you are able to follow up the tutorial then well and good if you are stuck anywhere feel free to drop your email id in the comments and i'll mail you the xaml so that's it for today bye bye happy automation